Hey guys, Stanley E here and we are back with another professional photographer camera review and I'm with my buddy here, Marion Sell. How's it going? Very good, thank you. Good. Okay. Yeah, so if you guys don't know Marion, Marion is a professional photographer. He does a lot of fashion, lifestyle, yeah. portrait photos, some beautiful stuff. Definitely go check him out. Uh, I'll have a link for his website and his Instagram um, uh, page. He took some photos of Gal Gadot. We all know we all love Wonder Woman, so... <laughs> I just gotta throw that out there. But uh, I don't think he took any photos of her this time with the, with the S10 time. Plus. But he, <laughs> he's like a bunch of right? <laughs> So but we, 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 I went ahead and gave him the S, S10 Plus uh, because he, we started the series last year with the S9 Plus. So it's almost like a year. Yeah. And um, you know, this is an opportunity to see how Samsung's camera has evolved, especially moving from two lenses last year to three. Yes. Uh, with the ultra wide, and he loves ultra wide photography, oh, yeah. like no tomorrow. No. <laughs> so, so um, what did you at least in terms of upgrades? Do you like the upgrade? You know, in terms of three lenses from last year? Yeah, absolutely. It lets you play much more. You've got much more variety. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go over a couple of photos. If you've never watched this video before, uh, we're gonna look at some JPEGs, some RAWs. Uh, some other things that are about the camera and then we'll round up this video and he'll give you his thoughts on what the S10 Plus camera is all about. So basically, this is the only person to listen to on YouTube. Everybody else can just go sit down. I, I'm gonna shut up and we'll just jump in. <laughs> so the first three photos we're looking at, this is a super wide angle shot and the regular shot and the tele shot of the same environment. Uh, this was the evening when the big snowstorm came to New York City. And it was just at the time when basically the environmental, the ambient light and the artificial lights inside the buildings kind of matched up. The photographers call this the blue hour and it's a moment when a lot of architecture photographers go outside and take the architecture photos. So the, um, the super wide angle lens is quite impressive. It is 123 degrees field of view, which roughly translates into a 12 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera. So that is actually really wide angle. Uh, usually this type of lens has a fish eye look to it, but for, uh, somehow Samsung managed to keep all the lines straight, which is, um, it is an impressive engineering to, to, um, to manage inside such a small phone. Um, I want to say that all of the lenses, um, all of the sensors seem to have very good detail. Um, the software does add a little bit of sharpening to those because these are all JPEG photos. Uh, it is not exaggeratedly sharpened though, so um, it has a nice feel to it. I think um, no complaints here on either of the shots. Okay, and here we have two night shots. Um, maybe as you know, I really love wide angle lenses because they really br bring you very close to your subject. And um, earlier you saw the cloud of the snowstorm come in and here I am with my bicycle actually in the snowstorm. So I got super soaked that night. Anyways, um, this super wide angle lens is doing really amazing things. I, uh, I love the look of it. Uh, you can very easily shoot nighttime shots out of your hand. I hear that there might be an upgrade coming where Samsung gets a dedicated night mode, so I'm curious about, uh, about this. But as of right now, um, the camera switches to ISO 800. With such a wide angle lens, you can actually easily hold like a fifth of a second out of your hand without shaking it. So, looks pretty good. Um, I wanted to say one thing that is, I added a little bit of a positive vignette to this image. So if you see it without the, the vignette, you are a little bit under the impression that the corners are a little bit too dark. So uh, I'm sure that Samsung software is already adding a lo a quite a lot of a positive vignette to the super wide angle lens because um, typically this, gray, this kind of lens have a, a lot of fall off towards the sides of the frames. Here is another, as you see, super, super rainy night shot with the regular lens in this case, the well, normal lens, and no complaints on this one either. Um, the, uh, the camera allows you to easily shoot out of your hand. You see how all the lights are throwing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, eight stars around them. So that's coming from the, from the f-stop. Uh, it has a real nice starry feel to it, I think. Details are really good, no complaints. And here's a very quick shot of my friend Andy, um, just to give you an idea of how ultra wide angle this lens is actually. It's, uh, well, it's very wide to the extent that I most of the times ended up having my fingers inside the shot. 
Um, here is a shot. I try to get my friends in mid-air at jumping and here's my first complaint about the, the software of the phone. It is very, very difficult to time the shutter right. So if you, if you want your friends to be jumping in the photo, you, you may as well go ahead and hit the burst button and take a lot of photos because it's very, very unpredictable when the camera is taking the photo after you, you click the button. Sometimes it's a half second, sometimes it seems to be a second or even more after. Um, here's a quick shot of the building that I was um, that I was in earlier when I took the photos out of the windows. Uh, it's just to demonstrate you what a telelens look gives you. Um, the, the, the lines of the architecture buildings seem to be more straight than when you're shooting up with a wide angle lens and uh, the, the kind of buildings stuck up behind one another. So all the lines that are now going towards the bottom left corner of the image are kind of stacked and it has a very distinct tele lens look to it. If you know your way around German photographers, then you will know that uh, the Germans love their water towers. So um, just to test the camera a little bit, I went up to a roof and shot some water towers. Um, this one here in a very strong backlit environment, once again, super wide angle. So this is no um, shadow recovery and this is a lot of shadow recovery. Um, there, I don't have complaints here. Um, you know, maybe you remember that uh, if you saw the iPhone video, uh, the iPhone XS um, does a very good job at backlit photo environments. And even I, I remember the GoPro doing a really, really good job. The um, Samsung doesn't seem to be trying so hard to make the photo look like, uh, I, I make it look appealing. So you get a little bit more of a natural feel here in the backlit environment which I appreciate, uh, I like it, um, but they could do a tiny bit more, maybe. Okay, here in this one, one more time, three images that show you the, the look you get just by switching lenses, the different looks you get. Uh, super wide angle is incredibly wide angle. I'm trying to zoom in here into the city and you barely recognize the Empire State Building. Um, on the regular lens, you get a more balanced feeling of the perspective and you recognize the city in the background. And then the telelens, you actually you can see the little birds flying around here. You get a really good amount of details here. Um, this is where my most important RAW file test comes in, because I wanted to show you the difference in JPEG and RAW file. Um, obviously, the JPEG gets a little bit of a contrast setting from Samsung, uh, just to make the, look, the image look appealing, basically. The RAW file comes in kind of neutral, which is, of course, very good. So. That's a very good thing. Uh, also, it comes in not sharpened. Um, I think the look of the RAW file is very good. I'm, I'm used to this kind of look um, because as a professional photographer, when you tether your camera into this program, Capture One, the images initially come, on, come in like this and then you go ahead and you add your contrast setting or whatever you like to, like to, add, on, like to add to it. So if you, if you pay attention a little bit, you see that around the Empire State Building, for example, in the JPEG file, you've got a little bit of a white outline and that is the artificial sharpening, which you don't have in the RAW file. So yeah, pretty good job on the RAW file. I wanna show you one big thing, like the big reason to shoot RAW instead of JPEG. So if we were to go ahead and try something like, for example, a black and white image where we darken the sky, then in a JPEG, so basically what I'm doing here, I'm darkening the blue tones in a black and white photo. In the JPEG, you instantly uh, confronted to the JPEG compression, which is pretty heavy. And I'm doing the same thing to the RAW file and you see how well that translates. I'm actually going to go ahead and exaggerate this even more by darkening the image. Uh, no problems whatsoever. You've got perfect gradient here in the, in the RAW file compared to the JPEG. So that's very neat. All right, here we did a little test of the burst mode. Um, that's me jumping, my friend Andy taking the photograph. And the, um, the burst mode, unfortunately, we only found out later that you have to really start hitting the button very early and you have to leave it pressed very long until after the action. So basically all of our bursts have always ended with basically the one shot that we wanted, but you couldn't see the landing now. Um, so they look great, by the way. Uh, I guess now I can only estimate because I wasn't able to find the information online uh, I guess it's about 10 frames in a second in this particular case. And all of these frames are high res, in this case 60 megapixel with a super wide angle. 
and they all look great. So guys, you've heard Marvin's take on the Galaxy S10 Plus camera. Yeah. It's a triple camera setup, and it sounds like you enjoyed it, but you also had a few things that you yeah. would like to see fixed, right? Yeah, exactly. So I, I want to give you a quick, uh, basically, sum up. So I think that free lenses are great to have in your pocket because they really allow you to play around. You can uh, click, click, click. You can cycle through different looks, and it's, it's really enjoyable to being able to do that. It allows you to be much more creative. Um, then I think that all the images came in pretty well balanced, as in like they didn't scream colors or didn't do anything outrageous or so. It looked pretty good. Uh, the file naming is great because maybe you remember like we had a phone with Pixel, a, <laughs> but it was like a messy, messy file naming situation. And actually, it's a it's a very organic file naming. Actually, you just look at the file name, you know what what day the photo was taken. That's a big benefit. But okay, I had a lot of struggle with the phone itself because um, I'm an iPhone user mainly and I, I'm not used to having the round corners that are touch sensitive. So whenever I tried, for example, to take a, a selfie with a super wide angle lens, uh, I oh, yeah, it always switched into a different mode and it, it took just photos of the landscape because it went back into like a portrait mode, which was now held the wrong way around. And uh, I was struggling with the, the focus every now, as well, as, uh, every now and then as well, because focus seemed to be lazy. Sometimes the, the image was visibly unsharp, but then the phone did it do a second attempt to refocus. So I had to tell it, try and do it again. That was another thing. Um, and I think that the pro mode, I think like professional people in, in photography are very visual people. Uh, the pro mode could be designed in a different manner, I think, to make it more visual, to make it more appealing for visual people. And it could be a little more organic, it feels like. Um, but besides that, once you get used to it, it allows you to do all those things. Not, not forgetting that pro mode doesn't add the, the ultra wide lens as well. Exactly. Well, and that's a big, big disadvantage, actually. I, but I believe it's only a software thing. As of right now, in the pro mode, you can't shoot with a super wide angle and the tele lens. You can only shoot with a regular lens which is a, a big downer for me. I, I wouldn't understand why. I guess it's just a, uh, just a software situation, yes. so it must, must be an update. Um, but besides that, you know what? It's a pretty powerful tool to have in your pocket. And the best camera is always the camera that you have on you. Though you can't take any photos without a camera, obviously. And um, if you would ask me if I wanted to schlep like a big DSLR camera around with me while snowboarding, then no, absolutely not. Like, uh, oh. I, Speaking of snowboarding, yes. you did some steady shots, didn't you? Yeah, I did, yes. Actually, the, the camera comes with one feature that I, that was that's really amazing. So it lets you film um, the camera, the sensor of the regular lens is a 4K sensor. So you can film and uh, tell it to make it shake free. So basically what it does is like the, you still get a 1080p video file out of it and the, the software kind of crops in. So basically it, it takes the shake out of your hands digitally and it's Fantastic, so much fun. Like, uh, I took two or three videos with it and they look amazing. Like, yeah, this is really a great feature. <laughs> so, well, it sounds like you definitely enjoyed using this phone. Yes, um, I do. And of course, there's some things that can be fixed for you. Yeah. And I think luckily, it sounds like a lot of that is software, which is a good Seems thing. Like it, yeah. If it's hardware, then that's just like a huge, big bummer yeah, exactly. on that aspect. Um, in terms of wide angle lenses, I want to ask you this question. Uh, you've tried the wide-angle lens on the LG. The last LG phone was the V40, as well as also the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Yeah. And now on the Galaxy, who has the better wide-angle lens so far for you? Well, uh, better or worse, it's difficult to tell now. Oh, which one have you enjoyed the most? Yes. We didn't photo, overlay right? the photos and photos compare right? the quality of the details, but I think that this one has the super wide-angle. It's a uh, or is it even called ultra wide angle? It's ultra wide angle. Uh, ultra yeah. wide angle. It's like uh, the, the equivalent of a 12 millimeter on a uh, on a 35 millimeter camera, and that's insane. Uh, with straight lines, yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm blown away actually. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, there you have it. Marion yeah. enjoyed using the the Galaxy S10 Plus camera, yeah. and it seems like he liked the lot. He liked a lot of photos that he saw in there. There's just some a lot of software things that. Samsung needs to fine tune, which I'm glad it's just software and not yeah. like the hardware itself. Uh, so uh, I will leave links for the photos that he took so you guys can take a look at them uh, for yourself so you can take a look at it. And we'll also leave uh, links for some of the other raw images as yeah. well so you guys can 
can have a look. Uh, definitely check out Marion uh, Marion Cell on his website and see all the lovely photography that he he takes. And also follow him on Instagram. His Instagram link is down below. It is Marion Cell on Instagram. Uh, and I want to thank you guys for watching. If you're watching us for the first time, definitely hit the subscribe button and uh, get. Uh, notified about our latest videos. Also, we do have a giveaway of a Galaxy S10e. So Damn. don't forget <laughs> to go ahead and enter the link down below to win yourself the Galaxy S10e. Uh, this is Thunder E saying thank you very much and always enjoy your entertainment. Thank you guys. Bye.